What's up everyone, it's Ryan here from The Y, and today I'm very excited to be bringing you a video on the show the world can't stop talking about, Squid Game. It's been truly amazing watching the rise of the series, and I really can't remember the last time something like this happened. Maybe Game of Thrones? Whatever the case, I fell in love with the show like millions of others and had to make a video about it. So here it is, 25 facts you didn't know about Squid Game. Real quick, I apologize if I mispronounce any Korean words, and also there will be lots of spoilers ahead, so consider this your warning. Jung Ho Yeon is definitely the breakout star from Squid Game, and amazingly, this was her first ever acting role. Before this, she was a model who did many international runway shows. While modeling overseas, she'd occasionally come home and dabble in some acting taking three months of lessons overall. Literally one month after signing with a talent agency, she auditioned for Squid Game while attending the New York Fashion Week and got the job. Just insane. You know those people where everything works out for them all the time? Yeah, that's her on steroids. Almost forgot to mention, before Squid Game, she had just under half a million Instagram followers. And in one month, that number has skyrocketed to over 20 million. The phone number used in Squid Game actually belonged to someone. The producers thought that by removing the first three digits, it would render the number unusable. Little did they know that if it was dialed as a local call, the prefix 010 was automatically added, leading to a real number. The person says they were inundated with up to 4,000 calls a day and can't even change the number because it's associated with their business. After hearing this, a South Korean president hopeful offered to buy the number for $85,000. And later on, Netflix changed the number to six digits, ending the harassment. As you know, in Squid Game, all the players wear the same evergreen tracksuits while all the guards are outfitted with hot pink jumpsuits. The director, Huang Dong-hyuk, explained how the tracksuits were inspired by 1970s athletic wear in Korea called training bok, and the workers' outfits were based off of pictures Huang found of industrial workers, although he at first intended for them to wear something like a Boy Scout uniform. Both sets of clothing were meant to erase any sense of individuality or uniqueness like worker ants going about their business, none more special than the other. Furthermore, the hot pink color comes across as soft and innocent, which is why it was specifically chosen as it contrasts the brutal nature of their work. So, I don't know about you guys, but I didn't even notice the significance of the shapes on the workers' masks and the hierarchy involved until about halfway through the series. But, as I'm sure most people are aware by now, the circles are the low-level workers or the grunts, the triangles signify an armed soldier, and the squares are akin to managers. But there's also an additional meaning to the masks in the Korean alphabet. The circle is the letter O, the triangle corresponds to the letter J, and the square signifies the letter M, spelling O-J-M, which are actually the initials of Ojingo Gaim, or Squid Game. One question I've been asking myself is why did Squid Game become so crazy popular? Obviously, the show itself was special. The premise isn't totally new, but they approached it in a way that made you care and with a darkness you just couldn't look away from. And you can't forget about the breathtaking sets, costumes, plot twists, and great acting from all those involved. But beyond that, I think there were many external factors that all came together at the perfect time. For one, this COVID pandemic has affected so many people worldwide, and Squid Game's portrayal of economic despair sympathizes with many people's plight in this day and age. Similar Korean pieces touching on the same topics have done very well overseas too, paving the way for Squid Game to blow up like it has. Another factor you have to consider is the ease of access we have at our disposal to watch a series like this. 10-15 years ago, there's no way any of this happens. 
But with the rise of Netflix and streaming straight to hundreds of millions of homes instantly, foreign language pieces can finally get the shine they deserve. And lastly, you can't discount the power of social media and word of mouth. And chances are, you learned of Squid Game through both of these avenues, unless you've been living under a rock. The statues featured in Episode 7 were all real people. Not only were the statues real, but so were the 456 people in the first game. Huang really wanted to minimize CGI usage, so they used a ton of extras for that scene. Because they didn't want to use a lot of CGI, all the sets were hand-built. The most time-consuming one to make was for the Marbles game, which was influenced by what a town would look like in South Korea during the 70s and 80s. The most dangerous set in Squid Game were the glass stepping stones, as they stood about 5 feet off the ground. Seoul National University was brought up many times as the prestigious college where Cho Sang Wu attended, and in real life, it is actually revered, and it's regarded as the most prestigious university in South Korea. And you guessed it, with a college that prestigious, getting your application accepted is a nightmare. But again, that's probably why Cho Sang Wu did so well in the Squid Game, even though he embezzled millions of dollars and got caught. He already beat out all the competition to get accepted to Seoul University. And he almost did it again. Squid Game has officially become Netflix's most popular series ever, with 111 million views in just 28 days. And when you consider the fact that Netflix has just over 200 million subscriptions worldwide, that number is even more astounding. The story of Squid Game's conception is almost equally as stunning as its prosperity. That story begins all the way back in 2008, where you could have found Huang Donghyuk in some cafe, broke, and reading Japanese survival manga like Battle Royale, Liar Game, and Gambling Apocalypse, Kaiji. These works inspired him to write a script based on his own situation and the idea of joining one of these survival games to free him of his debt. Huang loved the concept, but feared it was too bizarre and far-fetched for anyone to pick up. And his fears were all realized when he was turned down by every Korean production group he presented it to. So, Huang was forced to set aside the script. A decade later, much had changed in the world, which resulted in Netflix taking interest in the idea and ordering a nine-part series instead of just one film. And Huang had his work cut out for him. There was no one to help him write out the story or deal with the intricacies and complications that inevitably arose from the changing of it from a movie to a series. The first two episodes took half a year to complete, and by the end of it, six of his teeth had fallen out. But looking back at it now, I'm sure Huang would say that it was all worth it. Probably the most iconic set in all of Squid Game are the trippy set of staircases that carry the contestants from game to game. Creator Huang Donghyuk has come out and said that they were heavily inspired by MC Escher's relativity. This isn't the only media that's been influenced by Escher, as many other shows and movies have incorporated complex and confusing staircases into their content. One of the first big clues that Ilnam was not who he said he was is contained in the second episode. During the montage of the players being gassed upon entering the van, the old man is surprisingly absent. He's shown waiting on the sidewalk and entering the van just like everyone else. But the shot of him inside the van is omitted because he wasn't gassed like all the other players. Squid Game was originally gonna be called Round 6, they also planned on making it a feature film instead of a show, and I think we're all so glad that they didn't go down that route. There's a movie with a very similar premise to Squid Game. It's called Kamisama no Iu Tori, or As the Gods Will, and features a group of classmates who are forced to play children's games in order to survive. There's no money at the end of the rainbow for these kids, and none of them chose to play it. 
but it even features the red light green light game, just like in the show. Detective Junho was left out of the first drafts because of budget constraints, but upon receiving more money and changing it to a show, Junho was reinstated. Additionally, Ji Yong was intended to be a male character, but Huang later changed his mind because a bond between women would make more sense. <laughs> One aspect I thoroughly enjoyed about Squid Game was the choice of music, especially the classical music. It just felt like the calm before the storm, as the songs were mostly played when the next game was being announced. The dichotomy of cheerful music before impending death and horror was a fantastic move on their part. The budget for Squid Game was only 21 million which boils down to about 2.4 million an episode, and compared to other shows like The Simpsons, Stranger Things, Westworld, and The Mandalorian, that figure is absolutely tiny. Due to the enormous popularity of the show, many real-life squid games are popping up all over the world, minus the killing. There was one held in the UAE already, another is set to take place at a hotel in Korea with the grand prize of over 3 grand, and apparently a school in Belgium has had some problems with the kids playing red light green light and beating up the losers. Mr. Beast also posted that he's going to be making a squid game soon, supposedly with 456 random people and high quality sets. Safe to say I'm pretty pumped for that video. Much of the story, background, and characters are based on Huang's life. Jihoon, Cho Seng Wu, and Ilnam are all names of his childhood friends. The same is true for Junho and Inho, the two brothers in Squid Game, who are also real brothers Huang knew growing up. Not only that, but Huang instilled parts of himself into Jihoon and Cho Seng Wu. There were times in his life when he was dead broke and financially supported by his mother. And he vividly remembers going and betting on the horse races with dreams of winning it big. One thing he never did though was steal from his mother. On the other side of things, he went to Seoul National University, just like Cho Seng Wu, and was subject to high expectations and pressure to do well from his family. Like both characters, Huang grew up in the lower income area of Song Mundong, and his grandmother was a merchant who ran his street stall just like Sang Wu's mother did. Squid Game has gotten so big, it's even attracted the attention of North Korea. A state-run website put forth statements that the show highlights the beastly nature of South Korean capitalist society where mankind is annihilated by extreme competition. Okay, North Korea, okay. <laughs> Director Huang says he cast Lee Jung-jae as Ji-hoon specifically to destroy his charismatic image portrayed in his previous roles. And looking back at some of his earlier work, the contrast of his character in Squid Game to his other movies is worlds apart. Aside from acting, Lee owns a chain of upscale Italian restaurants named after a film he starred in, called Il Mar. He also owns a real estate development company, and even got his start in the entertainment industry by working as a fashion model. Ji Hoon's strategy of licking the Dalgona was based on director Huang's own technique he perfected back in the day. Because Ji Hoon had to lick through the honeycomb candy, the production team had to bring in a professional candy maker to make sure it wasn't too thick to pull off. Also, this set off a TikTok challenge where you have to cut out the image without breaking it, just like in Squid Game. In the first episode, the location where Ji Hoon is picked up by the van is the same area where the homeless man is seen freezing to death in the final episode. This area is known as Yoido, and just like Wall Street, it's the main finance and investment banking district in Seoul. Squid Game was undoubtedly great and left us with few things to complain about. 
but one area they could have improved on were the translations. Many speakers of both Korean and English have explained how much of what is said in the show is lost to non-Korean speakers. One example being thrown around a lot is in the scene with Han Min Yo, where she says, But what she actually said was, I'm very smart, I just never got a chance to study. Squid Game took over the internet, and now it looks like it's taking over Halloween of 2021 too. Since the release of the show, sales of white van slip-ons have increased 7,800%, and there have been thousands of DIY videos created on how to dress up like one of the players or guards from the show. At first, Huang apparently wasn't even considering the possibility of making a second season, but no one, including him, foresaw its meteoric rise. Now, Huang's admitted that he's feeling a lot of pressure to continue on with the series, although the very thought of it makes him tired. A couple of storylines he would like to explore further in a second season would be the police officer and his brother the frontman, the recruiter who's playing the game of Jokchi with Jihoon, and of course, Jihoon's cryptic ending. One thing's for sure though, Huang said that he's absolutely going to hire a team of writers and directors so he doesn't lose any more of his teeth. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show as much as I did. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. And let me know in the comments, did you guys watch it dubbed or subbed? Alright, till next time, have a great day everyone.